Good evening, uh, hello and welcome to the rebranded ShedX. We are now the Accidental Journalist Live and Undrugged. Uh, this is episode one with uh, Simon Cox. Today's episode is sponsored uh, by Jason Edwards and his uh, book, Monsters Among Us. Uh, do go check it out. It does give you a, a, a just a look into um, narcissism that you, you just wouldn't get to see and you wouldn't learn and you get to learn a lot. Uh, Jason will be on later um, in the next month or so um, to uh, speak about his, uh, his life. But um, yeah. Uh, hi, Simon. Hello there, Jack. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for coming on. Um, it's great. Um, so if we could just start, um, just take it right back to the start, mate. Um, you, you know, uh, tell us where you were and, 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 and what well, you did and why. Um, I'm, uh, I'm an independent filmmaker. I've been a filmmaker, to be honest, ever since I was a kid. Um, I saw Star Wars when I was 14, the original, and um, I just knew that I wanted to make movies. And you know, I was so inspired by the experience of seeing stuff, the original Star Wars in the cinema with all the kids screaming and cheering. And I just thought, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. And so, and that was when I was uh, just a young teenage boy. and. Um, um, I tried to get in the film industry, took me years to get in, but eventually when I was 22, I became a runner for a film company uh, called Filmfare. And they did things like the Wombles and Paddington and, you know, nice. kind of really good TV. And um, I got in their editing room and I learned how to edit. And I was there for about six years and cut somewhere in the region of about 300 episodes of um, the Wombles, Astro Farm, Gingerhead Man, Bangers and Mash, loads of kids TV of, um, you know, that people in there, Probably in their, what would they be, their late 20s and 30s now would, would yeah. know. Um, but it really taught me how to make films. But the thing I really wanted to do was make sci-fi and make feature films. And um, <clears throat> back in, um, where are we now, 1998, I got my first break. I made a, a, a supernatural thriller called Written in Blood. Um, and it, it was great. It was a really good experience. It was, I mean, it was a hard experience, but it really taught me, you know, loads about making films. And um, after that, I wanted to make, I decided it was quite hard to do. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do it again. Really me. Oh, hello, I'm hearing myself. You know, uh, yes, sorry. That's all right. So okay. I thought, I thought um, if I'm going to do it again, go through all that, that rigmarole of making a big movie, I'm, I want to make a sci-fi. I want to make hmm. the film that I want to make. Uh, is like a kind of Star Wars inspired thing. And um, I went, uh, you know, I went banging all the doors, trying to get money for it. And it just took me years and years and years and um, lots of promises you know and I got into lots of dilemmas of people promising the decent sums you need to to make a proper movie and um, it took me nearly 10 years to get this thing going and I, and and at the end of it it all it all just collapsed and it collapsed about three times and you know raising money for the film is that is the hard part making mm. it you know relatively straightforward um, so in 2012 I'd had an absolute it, you know, it was, it nearly kind of wiped me out. So I thought, and, and you know, the internet was in quite a good shape and we could put video online and there were, um, there were other filmmakers I, and Facebook and Twitter was all quite new, but I noticed there were other people starting to use crowdfunding. Hmm. So I thought, I'm going to try that. So I put, um, I, I, I put the package together, put it online, knew a few people on Facebook and Twitter, not many. And, tried to raise, you know, a, a good dollop by crowdfunding and it didn't really work. So I, I thought, well, what about if we break the film down in phases mm. and we'll, we'll um, you know, I'll just raise small amounts. And because people were putting in like 10 here and 20 quid, it wasn't like, you know, anyone was giving you 50 grand or anything. So mm. I, I, I did that and I raised seven grand on that first one. And so that was called phase one. And then for the next two years, I did another seven campaigns, you know, and it was like 10 grand and, 12 grand and eight grand and but it it all kind of added up and one of the things i wanted to do on the film was make sure i paid everybody you know yeah. but not not mega bucks but enough to, we all got mortgages to pay and stuff so i did that for two years and then eventually i had about 20 minutes of the final movie in the can and i thought christ this is going to take me decades um but it was a it was enough people were seeing i was shouting about it all over facebook everybody knew me and stuff so mm. some investors eventually came on board not quickly it took another sort of like mm. few years but it kind of came in and i shot this epic sci-fi movie 
and um you know and i finished it uh, at the end of uh where are we 1919 sorry no i didn't 2019 i mean um there's <laughs> <laughs> the era i'm in and um you know and i got i got it in cinemas here in the uk got a cinema release uh mm. got it in dvd um all over you know in all the supermarkets and uh, all on digital and you know there are tv sales but but what it led to which has blow my mind of it really is um because it was great getting it in cinemas here in the uk mm -hmm. but in america it, it's it's been in all the walmarts and supermarkets in america it's had um a, a little tiny bit of uh cinema uh but it's been all over digital platforms it's done really well canada and then that opened the door to japan australia south korea we had a cinema release in south korea which is just a poster you've seen the poster yeah 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 it's great yeah. It's, I mean, it's been amazing and it is a low budget British movie, you know, people, I think some people have been a bit shocked, you know, it's not, it's not a Hollywood blockbuster, but it's done really well and I've had such great support on it. So I'm, uh, I'm really, really chuffed, mate. It's been, been a fantastic experience. Yeah. <gasps> so there you go. That's where, that's how I got to here. That's, 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 that's cool. So, I mean, so it was called Kaleidoscope, man. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, re actually quite recently, um you changed it to invasion planet earth is that right yeah the, you know the reason was um i owe i do owe quite a lot of money to investors you know and uh, and I, I wanted to give the film its best chance of getting mm. out there and when i went to try and get the film distributed nobody was interested when it was called kaleidoscope man it right. was, you know so we talked about it and i thought well i don't mind going a bit commercial on it and and um so i changed the name to invasion planet earth uh, is the dvd by the way and um it, it's uh it, it suddenly got snapped up and it sold all over the world i mean the distributors have all told me got three of them they said it wouldn't have sold to japan being mm. called kaleidoscope man so you think well okay you, you know it's it, it i had to kind of compromise sometimes you've got to lose the occasional battle to win the war you know so i and, I, and I'm, I'm always it's always about the next film so i thought yeah. so if we can make this one be successful then getting the funding for the next one should be a bit easier so, yeah. yeah so can you explain some of the process so after you did all, all, all the crowdfunding can yeah. you explain some of the processing um what you put into the filming uh getting the actors and uh, yeah, I believe, yeah was it was it toya that well for the yeah film? well i knew i knew toya walcock she's only in it a little bit um but no i met her a couple of times and um i told her about it and she was she was up for it and, i mean toya is very very supportive you know um there's no airs and graces with her she's absolutely sort of the earth and uh she she liked it she, she she wanted the part when she said she was interested i extended her part because it was only originally a small part so i extended this um her sequence and, and you know she's really really good in it and um but that that opened the doors on the whole thing but the problem is because it because i didn't have all the money normally you get the money in one dollop and you go and make the film but because i was doing a bit here a bit there we were shooting it in bits you know and, and I tried to get some famous names initially, but then I thought it's too complicated. So I just thought, well, I'm going to find the best actors. Let's find some new talent guy because there's so many good actors out there. So mm. I, 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 you know, found these guys and audition people. And um, I'd worked with one lady, Julia Holt. I'd worked on, on corporate jobs and she was absolutely fantastic. And so I kind of wrote the part with her in mind, for her, her character. And... Um, that was it really and we found simon haycock who's this absolutely brilliant actor and i just thought the guy's a, it looks like a movie star he'd be perfect mm -hmm. and we met and they were up for it and they all did it cheap but they all knew they were going to it was going to take a while so i yeah. had that they were all really committed um so that was the first bit and then i don't know if you've seen the film jack but there's these big battle scenes in birmingham if you said yeah. anything, I, I saw all the pre, uh, all the press you did for that. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I, I don't get really okay. good chance to watch that anything. <laughs> That's all right. but I've, I do believe it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime now. Yeah, it's free. So, so if you subscribe, that you, know, you don't pay for it. Um, but no, there's these scenes in Birmingham, okay? And I, I, I'd always wanted to do that kind of War of the Worlds thing, you know, where you mm. have the spaceships kind of flying down the street, blasting all the crowds and everybody's running and the tanks are there and soldiers are shooting up and, you know, and so I asked Birmingham Council if they would have let me, first of all, do a crowd scene. And they were so good. They, they've got a company called Film Birmingham who just look after film shoots mm. in, the, in the city. And they, they closed off the centre of the city for us. 
on a Sunday night and we advertised like crazy to get extras and um, 900 people turned up, just no. locals turned up and they ran up and down the streets and, and fell over and it was brilliant. We had loads of cameramen filming it, camera people filming it, I should say. And then, um, and then we did, it took quite a long time to do it. So we shot this big one, big scene. And I, I used that to help with the crowdfunding because all the people there then came in and chipped in and joined the crowdfunding. But later on, about four years later, when I'd sort of finished the rest of the film, um, I thought it'd be great to have tanks and soldiers. So I went back to Birmingham and said, can we bring some tanks into the city? And they, again, they, they said, well, if you, as long as it's all legit, you know, and done mm. properly, they let us bring, we brought three tanks in, an armoured personnel carrier, mm. a, a, a jeep with a, you know, one of the machine guns on the back. And um, we had about 40 actual soldiers with replica machine guns. Uh, and, and we shot these brilliant scenes and more crowds running around. And it's, uh, I, I'm so proud of it. It's an absolutely brilliant scene. Um, you know, and it's, it come, it's, a it's a real nice climax to the film. Mm. And of course, everyone that was in it now, you know, a, been part of it and helped to promote it and share it and it's been absolutely brilliant and you know i think we're all very proud it was a very it was a big thing to do and I even got onto um bbc midlands today because of it so mm. you know it's been it's been great so like i personally when i've um thought about making a film i've made a few short films but yeah um i would imagine that um now you've got it done um you know, you've pushed and pushed and pushed, you've got it done. Um, are you wanting a rest? Or, you know, I, I, I know you've been looking into another film. Um, yeah, where, are we, uh, where are you with that? To be honest, you know, it's funny that because people said, oh, you need a rest in it. It's, I love making films, you know, uh, you know what it's like. And I'm so, it's so, it's such a passionate thing when you, when you're really into it, it it's like, I, it's the work, boring work that I don't like. It's making mm -hmm. films is a, is a joy to me. So I, I just want to make more and more. And um, I mean, I think with this one, it's opening up doors for me that weren't open before. Mm. So, um, you know, we're talking about my new film, which again is another epic sci-fi. Um, right. COVID's kind of messed things up a little bit. Um, so, so I've been, that's it really. I've been setting up the new film and I've spent the last sort of eight months kind of reworking and reworking, reworking the draft of the script. Mm -hmm. And it's it's looking good, and we've started casting it. You know, um, we're a bit unsure when we can physically film it because of say because of COVID. But but what we're doing, what I've been doing, is working on the special effects. There's, there's lots of spaceships in, yeah. so we've had some uh, actual big giant spaceships made, and uh, we had them filmed during the last lockdown actually on on a big like motion control rig in London. So it's one of those. You've, it's like a big. It's like one of those robots. You know, you yeah. put a hammer and it flies it around and the Nice. Well, that's the ship and then the camera flies in and you get these great powerful spaceship flying shots and so i've been nice. we've been doing those that's the only thing we've been doing on the film so we've got a film not quite there yet but it's coming together with lots of effect shots and no actors so yeah. it's a bit strange at the moment but it's like a jigsaw you build a big jigsaw and, so what yeah. can you tell me about the new film uh, well it's called of infinite worlds and um what can i tell you about the new film um this is subject to contract, okay? But um, yeah. it, hopefully uh, Michael Brandon is going to be in it. And Michael nice. Brandon was in um, Dempsey and Makepeace years was, ago. Yes, the guy's a legend, and he, yes. there's, an, there's an older captain of the ship, and uh, he's up for it. And he's read the script and really liked it. So um, obviously, I've got to get the money first. So uh, we haven't got yeah. the money yet, but uh, that's all. It's all going in the right direction. We'll see. But he's up for it, so I'm very excited about that. And um, yeah, uh, what else can I tell you? We've got a fantastic casting director on board. She's been brilliant. You know, working slightly against the odds because say we don't have the money in place and it's a tricky time at the moment. You know, mm. with everything, so we can't we can't set any dates. But and we're also looking at doing it um, as a what's called a virtual production. Now I don't know if you've seen the Mandalorian, the Star Wars show. I've not seen it yet. No, I've not had a well, chance. Well, a lot of people might know what I'm talking about, but it's using this. Um, 3D kind of virtual background, so yeah, you know, it's all it's very very clever, and I've I've done a lot of research into it. So we're looking at doing some of it like that, um, right? Uh, it's quite costly, though, I realise. Mm -hmm. So we're we're looking at kind of ways of doing it and sort of alternative, you know, independent filmmaking ways and stuff. Um, but it's great. It's a really really good script. Very pleased with it. Lots of iconic characters, battles, space battles. You know, loads of 
good things in it. So uh, I'm very excited about it. It's a, it's a big step up from Invasion yeah. Planet Earth and um, hopefully with the budget as well, which would be nice. Yeah. So so how are you going about the budget? Will you doing, be, be doing more crowdfunding? Will you be um, uh, going directly to investors? Well, the, the jury's out slightly on that one. But at the moment, I did a bit of crowdfunding uh, back at the first lockdown and over 100 really lovely people just chipped in and, and helped. So, um, so we started at crowdfunding, but I've been pitching to some investors over the last sort of few weeks and uh, who knows where it will go. But we're having good conversations and, you know, and I, but what I do want to do this time around is I need more money. It's very, very difficult. Mm. It took the last one took like eight years to, to do, you know, nearly 10 years to do, plus the 10 years chasing my tail at, at the beginning of that. So, mm. it was, um, you know, it's a lot of work. So this time I'm hoping to get the money and having a film that's been successful is really, really helpful. Sadly, it hasn't made the millions that I was hoping. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> well, you, you know, um, it, it's, it's not about the money, is it? It's about you've got that product out there, which then gives you the legitimacy to then go forward and say, this is what we've done before. Yeah. This is what we did with X amount of money. Um, imagine what we could do with this amount of money. Um, yeah, that that is hopefully that's that's the thought process behind it. And you know, with, with more money, you get the distribution goes up and everything just is that a little bit better. Um, so, you know, and I, I I know there's a lot of people on Facebook probably watching this now, a lot of actors. But the bloody annoying thing that I've realised is, unfortunately, names do sell. So you need to try and get some famous names in it, and mm. it's 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 a. It's a it's tricky it's tricky so it's finally finding the right balance i want to i like to bring new people in as well but it's it's finding the balance so um we'll i just have to see i do the best i can and and uh, you know try and make it work um hmm. but i just i just want to one of the things i'm really keen to do is you know when when we get films funded properly we can employ lots of people and you know so many people out of work at the moment and i'm you know i'm a freelance camera and editor and it's it's very frustrating at the moment as a, as a freelancer. I know it's for everybody. I mean, hmm. you know, we're, we're still here. I've got a roof over my head, so it's fine. But, um, you know, productions need funding. It's, you know, and, and you can't get in the door in places like Netflix unless you're really established. Yeah. So where do you go for, where do you go for, to find investors? You know, it's, it's hard and it's, it's a kind of risky thing as well. So, hmm. you know, it would be nice if the BBC and people like that would uh, look at supporting independent films as well. Anyway, there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I have uh, quite a few people on my Facebook that um, that follow independent film that yeah. are all involved in the independent film, um, you know, especially the local scene here in Norwich. Yeah. Um, oh, you in Norwich, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, no, just outside oh. Norwich. Oh, lovely, um, yeah. And you, you, North Norfolk, South Norfolk, yeah. Um, we, we, we quite, um, we're quite blessed because we've got now two studios, uh, that are at the old, um, hair bases. So we've got one at Coltishall, yeah. um, which is the, the bigger one. Uh, and then we've got one uh, now at West Rain and where the souvenir films were made. Right. Um, so we, we, we're quite lucky there. Um, there are a lot of people on my Facebook that are, you know, trying to get into uh, making, uh, independent films so what advice would you have as someone that's just been through that and, and and spent their life doing that what advice would you have to sort of um well you know i'll tell you what the first thing one thing i've realized is we need allies we have to stick together you know uh in the old days you know it's almost like you'd hit the glass ceiling and the people that had done really well would sort of would separate themselves but we all need to stick together especially now and, and I mean, you know, I can say, yeah, pick up a camera and go out and make your film, but really do try and raise money. I, I, I can't stress that enough. Um, and, and crowdfunding is a great way to do it. And when you raise the money, it just helps you raise the bar of your film. It's really important that we try and pay actors, that we try and pay crew. Sure, if you're starting out, not, not you, know, you don't have to pay people mega bucks, but mm. We can't, this is whole, oh, I'll do it for free and things like that. It, it really doesn't help build the industry. So I, my, that's my take on it anyway. People can, you know, I'm sure everyone will have their own opinions on it, but I think we've got to look after each other and, 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 and you know, 
I, I try and help other filmmakers on, on Twitter and Facebook and I'll, I'll chip into a campaign if I can. I mean, I've been skint last few mm. since, I've, since I've done this film, but, but you know, we have to sort of look after each other and try and share each other's posts. And that, that's, that's really good. The other thing is um, don't be afraid to be bold, courageous, uh, you know, make ambitious films. Um, the film, if you may want to make a film about two guys or girls in a pub, having a conversation, chances are that, you know, unless it's a spectacular piece of work, a lot of people aren't going to watch it. So we need to consider, try and make films that people want to see, you know, that, that might actually uh, sell, you know, you know, the people pay to go and see. Because if you do that, and if you, and if you sell it here, you know, chances are you can get it sold all mm. over the world. And that's one thing I've realised. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, is that, is, is that good advice, Jack? I don't know. It's just go and go for it. No fear. Yeah. Don't let fear stop you. No, I, I, I think fear has been a, an establishing factor into a, a lot of my sort of earlier career in, in, in make, yeah. you know, making short films because I didn't have the money. Um, I don't have the money to pay, pay actors. And everybody that I got was, you know, willing um, they, they, but now we're in a, you know, with COVID, we're now in a situation where people actually really need to be paid. Uh, there's no money going into the arts. Um, Theatres aren't allowed to open. Um, yeah. Cinemas aren't allowed to open. Uh, and you, you, you know, I've, 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 I've been blessed to have been on on a film set during COVID, uh, and it's it's hard work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, I've seen some of that work. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, this it's very easy to find a reason not to do something. Oh, I haven't got any money or I haven't got this or I haven't got that. And that's the time when you need to push the hardest. i tell you one thing that's really surprised me. Uh, since I'm, I'm, I started making Invasion Planet Earth, when I was, when I stopped being a twat and, and decided to ask for help, you know, I desperately, passionately want to do this thing. Once I started asking for people for help and not the people that I thought were up there with the money, when I started asking my friends, you know what? It just came back. And I realised, and I had more fun. when I, My first film was all funded properly and it was a nightmare. Once people started supporting me and chipping in and becoming a, a, being part of it, it was great fun. And it reminded me of when I was a kid making films. That's when it was fun then. You just went out and did it. And, and you know, life's tough enough as it is. And I think, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, and, and you'll be surprised who, who comes out of the woodwork and helps you. You know, if you're passionate and you're generous and you're honest, you know, and, and um, that's all I've ever tried to do. And, you know, and, and I, I love sci-fi and things. And always, I just wanted to make Star Wars. And, and once I put it out there, I realized there's a lot of people that also wanted to make Star Wars and wanted to watch mm. independent films inspired by films like that. So, uh, you know, that's what I've tried to do. So don't be afraid to ask for help. It's 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 huge. It's blown my mind the support I've had. That's that, that's that's something I actually that I've noticed even down to this, so this podcast. Yeah. Um, that um, before I started, I was so full of fear that people wouldn't want to listen to me. They wouldn't want to see the end product. Mm. Uh, and then it was just like, actually, I'll step out in faith, step out in fear, and yeah. doing that. And then asking people, people have gone, we know how fearful you were. We know what it's taken for you to step out into that. So, yeah, and people have been really, really sort of forthcoming. And, and you know, people have gone, yeah, because it's, it, this is now building up. I could never have imagined how successful this would be. Well, um, and I, I, you know, I love it. So, yeah, you know, I would say to anybody watching that, um, has anything on their heart that they want you know they, they really want to do and that they're fearful that take taking that first step even though it might sound seem so difficult it's it it needs to be done because stepping out in fear people can see that and they yeah. will not only respect that but they're more likely to actually want to help you're you're so right jack you know you know i'll tell you what I, i've worked it out over the last few years the hardest part is make the decision to do it. And, you know, it's like, you, you've got the idea and it's there and it's bubbling under you, you're all excited about it, but actually I'm a bit scared. You have to go, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this. And, and you've got to convince yourself before you convince everybody else. And once you've done that, 
and you go, okay, I've decided what, decided what I'm going to do now. It's, it's terrifying, but it's also invigorating and suddenly you feel alive. The next thing to do, once you've made that decision and you've committed to it, is make a plan. Okay, right, I'm going to do it. How am I going to do it? And then you'd say, so you work out roughly what you're going to do. You don't know if it's going to work, but you, but you follow your instinct. You say, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Then the next one, part three, this is a really big one. You take action. And that is you make the phone calls, you write the emails, you buy this, you buy that, you do whatever you're going to do. And then, and then as you get rolling and you're on the journey, you then look at the, the plan, the strategy, and you go, and oh, I didn't quite work. I'll tweak this and I'll do that and do that. And then you take action again. So it's, it's adjusting the strategy, taking action, and you just kind of keep going until suddenly you get it right. And once I did that on, on Invasion Planet Earth and I found the strategy, it just came to me. I, I, I can't explain the actual details, but, but it was like when I knew I needed money, um, it just kind of came in. I thought, right, okay, now I need to do this. It just came in. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing I realized as well is that it's so important to be thankful and, and, you know, it's really cool. I know this is hippie kind of stuff, but coming from a place of thanks, and, and there's been a lot about it on the news now, it's huge. And every day I was going, right, instead of saying, I want this, I need this, I was, I, I, obviously I knew what I needed, but I'd be going, right, well, I've got this. This has been great. Thank you for this. Look, look at what I've got so far. It's brilliant. It just came to me. It, everything just came in. It didn't happen quickly. Um, and I had to work hard for it, but it just happened. And so, you know, I hope that, kind of helps people <laughs> um but it is about that decision make that decision first on get a plan how you're going to do it take action adjust the plan and be very thankful I promise you mm -hmm. those five things four or five things whatever it is that's that's the key i believe yeah i i, I believe that um d d just the process of uh, the one thing that i've i've, I've learned in um you know coming out of a, a addiction and, and and into doing this and in, yeah. into uh, acting and stuff like that that the whole process of stepping out in fear um and being fearful once you step out in fear um you're no longer fearful you're fearless yeah and it kind of flips it on its on its ass really uh, and that is when we sort of get on um yeah. Yeah. i mean even if one person was just watching this um you know when i started I'd, I'd still do it because it's affecting one person and, and that for me is I didn't have a voice mm. I now have a voice so I want to give other people a voice um, that, that yeah. don't necessarily have that platform which is why this 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 was born but um, you, you um, know uh, that's all come from my love of love of film mm. um, love of writing and you know, I tried for years, like you, um, but unfortunately, I ended up um, <laughs> on my ass, um, drunk, drugged, and homeless. Oh, um, right, and okay. you yeah. know, it it, oh. it it kind of nearly killed me. My want for not fame, but my want for success in the film world. And it was only when I said. Right, I don't want nothing to do with that anymore, or, or I'm not going to chase it. That's when you, you, uh, I, I got the uh, message saying, "Can you come and do the souvenir? Can you come and do the souvenir part two? And that's how I then got back into um, uh, other, other, other people's projects, um, and then started this because um, out of my love of uh, film and uh, that, that's so like inspiring, that. man. That is so inspiring. You know, it's a really corny saying. I can't. I can't quite remember it. it's like the road to success is littered with failure and you know until you've fallen on your ass until you've had those down times it's it's like what it, what can be worse the worst the worst is death obviously death is, ends everything been there done that <laughs> yeah yeah done that easy but but you know and that that's the worst that's ever going to happen uh, mm. there's physical pain and there's all that stuff that goes with it but that's why fear is this thing it's a decision you have to push through it and keep going and you know when you've had it that bad i mean you know i'd, I'd probably get in trouble for saying this but we lost a child a few years ago and and when you've you know that's as for me that's the worst thing ever and it but it's like you know if you can get through that and you can do the things you want and follow your heart and and inspire people and you know that's 
that's huge that's huge so um you know you've got to keep going and you know and, and also the other thing is I don't know how old you are, Jack. You look like a young man in his 30s, I'd assume. Uh, I wish. Um, I'm in my 40s. All right. Um, okay. um, there's, this, there's this great pressure, which and I certainly put myself in my 20s. It's like, oh, God, I've got to do it. I'm a failure. I'm, I'm 29 and I haven't done this. And, done. and that passion that you have doesn't go away. I'm 55. It doesn't go away. So you might as well say to yourself, well, this, um, this might take me a few years, but I'm going to keep going one step in front of the other. Just keep going. I you know I write lists every day. I've got to this day, got to that, and, and that's the way you do it. It's small, just small uh, tasks. And if you complete them, it, eventually you get the you get the whole thing done. So, you know, I, I personally, I, I think that um, for me anyway, um, mm. to be a filmmaker, to be a writer, to be any sort of creative, you have to have a certain kind of soul. Um, and when we when we are creatives, we wear our hats on our sleeves and present yeah. it to the world. And when you wear your hat on your sleeve, it opens you up for so much attack. Oh, yes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and there are people that will always put you down. There are people that will get jealous of your success. There are people that will try to push you back. There are people that will try to use you. And it's, you know, you, you've got to have a certain frame of mind to be able to just keep on pushing through that. If, if you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that I was born creative um, mm. and, and, and that, that is just the biggest part of my personality and it's cathartic um, for sure, but it's also been the sort of biggest catalyst to my mental health problems yeah, yeah. Um, through fear of failure, um, you know, fear of not being good enough. Yeah, yeah, they've been yeah. laughed at it's, and ridiculed. It's a, it's a disease. It's creativity is a disease, isn't it? It's like, but you can't. I can't shake it, so you have to feed it. But you know, I mean, I mean I'm very lucky. I've got a lovely wife who's also an artist, so we kind of understand each other. Mm. And you know, we've got two lovely kids, and we have a house. We've done all right, you know, and we've, we've kind of got got there. Mm. Um, but you know, it doesn't go away. I, do you know? I've been. I got absolutely slated. You've only got to look at the IMDb. Um, uh, you know, reviews mm. that, that the public have given my film. And there's a lot of love for it, but man, there's a lot of hatred. And they all take the this on uh, YouTube. And and it's like, and, and it hurt at first because I, I wasn't I wasn't ready for it for one. I didn't know it was going to mm. kind of, I thought it'd be everybody else, but no. But, um, you know, but I've just had to take it on the chin and you go, well, I could either, I could give up or or I can just go, no, I'm going to go bigger next time. If you hate mm. if you hate Invasion Planet Earth, you're going to hate the next one. <laughs> really hate yeah. the next one. So yeah. um, I just had to kind of like man up and just take it, you know, and it's a shame. It's a shame people are, have to be so, you know, so horrible when actually we could, we could all work together and inspire each other and all be creative and, you know, but I guess that's the, that's the world we live in, you know. Yes, there's so much negativity out there. Yeah. Um, and especially on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, yeah, it's yeah. all about um, it's all about likes and it's all about shares. And I know that we need a certain amount of likes. We need a certain amount of shares. Yeah, sure. We want a certain amount of people to watch our stuff. But at the end of the day, it's um, it, it, it's about a voice and doing this, mm. making your film, um, you know, whatever you're, you're conveying your voice. I made a film a couple of years ago with, with um, my, um, my closest friend, Earl Ling, uh, called Elise. Uh, and it was kind of one of my passion short films. I'd wanted to make it for a, a few years and I'd never really made a, a, a proper film. Everything I'd done had been unscripted. I'd done the asylum stuff. People oh, yeah. had seen it. People had liked it. But you know, I'd, I'd, uh, and I have a a, a heart uh, for um, survivors uh, and people that have gone through abuse and yeah. um, things like that. So I, I, we wanted to make a film about domestic violence and abuse, and you know, it's a short five minute film. Uh, we've had a couple of th I think a couple of thousand views on on YouTube, um, and most people like it. But we've been slated um, because we went out and we did something that was taboo. Yeah. Um, and people will always hate 
what they don't understand. And there are people out there that don't understand the realness, but there are also people out there that don't understand what you've put into making um, Invasion Planet Earth, um, how difficult it is to do the effects, and what you've done actually is more than they would do in, yeah, in, yeah. in a lifetime. And you're going to do it again, which it takes some balls, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, even I'm questioning that. Myself, but, um, <laughs> The thing is, it's it's a lot easier to knock down than it is to build, you know. Mm. And, and uh, as I mean, that's a cliche comment, uh, but it is. People, it's so much easier to knock someone than it is to to, to build. But I, I just hope that, because you know, ultimately, we're gonna fall off this mortal coil one day, and it, and but the work will remain as long as we keep you know looking at it. Every YouTube's around for the next few hundred years. Our work's gonna be popping up there, you know, and it'll be regarded as historical kind of you know art yeah. and um that's that means more than some kid somewhere slagging you off because they got nothing better to I, I it's funny you know i i um i do a little search on youtube every now and again just to see first of all if someone's nicked the film and stuck it on there but mm. i've seen i've seen these strange videos these, these these two guys um sat there with microphones camera on them and they reviewed my film but they were just nasty and derogatory and negative and I, and I watched it and it was a bit hurtful some of it was funny they were taking a piss so I just thought oh okay but I thought well you know what when I was your age I was running around with the cine camera going out making things and you know and it just seems very easy to just to do that and become think they become you know that 12 people watched it this their, their video and it's like why don't you go out and make something creative inspire people tell a story, tell your story and mm -hmm. um, do, do something that's going to actually help mankind <laughs> rather than just bashing somebody else because it's easy to do that. But, um, you know, I, just, I don't, you know, I, I'm just, just got to take it on the chin and just accept that there are people like that. And hopefully uh, there's no greater success than, sorry, not was it? There's no greater revenge than mm. success, as they say. So yeah. I'm just going to try and be successful again. Well, He's like, yeah. well, I mean, it, it, any form of sort of criticism is really sort of, it, it is, is, you know, all it, it's like all, uh, what, what do they say? All, um, I can't think of it. Um, <laughs> my mayor's gone, but yeah, um, sorry, sorry, it's, it's, it's like any sort of attention, whether it be negative attention is attention on the film um you see personally i see um negative reviews as a challenge there's only three or four films that i've ever turned off hmm. and not watched all the way through I, i'm a big big film lover um and you, you know my my wife will be the first one to tell you she hates watching films when it's sometimes because I'll, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll i'll say what's gone into that scene probably how much it cost you, you know what the director was thinking yeah, why they did the shot that. um you, cause that that that's that's the sort of passion that i have for film but you, you know there's only a couple three or four films that i've ever turned off because I, i've just not been able to get into it and i, th I think when I first started following um, Clyde Stock Goldman, as it was then, yeah. um, uh, so somebody said about it being a, a film only worthy of the Sci-Fi Channel, and I thought that is a compliment because actually the <laughs> Sci-Fi Channel is a great channel, and there's some great films on there. There might yeah. not be like big budget, sort of the best effects in the world, but I, th I think there's, there's some really good films on there, like the Librarians and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, as well. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I can imagine. Is, we've, we've all been spoilt with two hundred million dollar Hollywood blockbusters. Where, but but they, I mean, they're great. I loved, I love the Marvel films. You know, they they're great. But it doesn't mean that everybody else has to be trampled down. You know, let there's, we there's, there's there's room for all of us. You know, um, we'll all go and watch the Marvel films. But why why shouldn't we be able to go and see a little independent film that someone spent years making? You know, mm. a lot of love and passion's gone into it. And and also we've got to we've got to remember that the independent films now. Hopefully, these guys will go on and they'll become you know the leaders in the industry. You know, you've got to start somewhere. And so um, I think we need to open the door to independent films. And you know, 
that's why I was saying earlier, it's just, it would be great if the BBC would just buy more independent stuff or, or have a separate channel for independent films and that. I know there's lots of channels out there and, mm. you know, like sci-fi and horror channel are great. A horror channel bought my first film. Um, they didn't pay much for it, mind, but it, mm. you know, it gave me a platform and, and that's kind of great. But um, no, it'd be nice if to be, or, 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 you know, one of the big channels could help us or, you know, we'll see. I think times are changing quite drastically at the moment. So we'll see. I, I think the whole entertainment and the whole business is changing because of COVID and we're going to be yeah. stuck in this um, for the for foreseeable future for the next year or two, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, so too. And yeah. while that is happening, um, it's, it's down to platforms like Facebook, like... Um, some of the uh, Angerman distribution, um, YouTube, Vimeo. People want to be entertained um, and, and they're going to look at sort of um, different ways to do that. I do believe that there needs to be some sort of forum out there for people like us um, on the mainstream, like a, a sort of Netflix for independent yeah. films. Um, I, and I think that there is a, a, a sort of a market for that, um, whether Netflix or anyone would take that on, I, I don't know. I know that Netflix are quite fussy about what they take on at the yeah, moment. Yeah, they're more so now. They used to scoop up anything, but now, well, I'm not, I'm, I haven't, I'm, I'm quoting that from somebody else, but mm. now they're very, very, they like to fund their own stuff and, you know, so uh, they don't buy as many independent films now as they used mm. to. Um, I mean, Amazon Prime has been good, but, but but the problem with Amazon is, you know, they don't pay any money. They, they pay peanuts. Mm. You, the first time you, when you put your film on, you can charge for it. So say, for example, you're going to charge a tenner and your movie comes mm. out, people then pay. Um, but if it doesn't do very well, you so you need to market the hell out of it. But if it doesn't do well, it kind of goes mm. down the rankings and soon disappears. So you put it on Amazon Prime where you get paid a, a, a few pence per every 15 minutes. And mm. it's not it's not great. You need to get millions and millions of views mm. for it to, to make anything. It's a bit like Spotify or one of these mm. services. And it's a shame if they could just get a bit more money out there to independents. It would it would help and it would help mm. the next generation of filmmakers. So we'll see. I mean, you know, I think I think the whole code thing's been a bit of a leveler. So um, I do it's, too. It's, it's interesting. You know, I'm, I've suddenly got getting more interested in things that I, I wouldn't have got a year ago. So um, mm. I mean, I've got the film out, which helps. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes. Well, I, th I think for independent filmmakers right now. Um, a lot of the you've got the big free studios and you know they're doing what they're doing yeah um but you know you know like last year there was barely any films out at all you know um and i think that because money is so short i think now is the sort of time for um thrifty filmmakers and and uh, independents mm. to go out there and actually make a mark on on, on the film business. A24 have, have sort of helped with the independent mm. thing, but I, I, I find that a bit, you know, some of the people around that and some of the fans around that, there's a lot of snobbiness around it. And, you know, yeah, we, we, we need fun, independent films that you can just sit down, watch, not think too much about, and just enjoy for two hours. It's a bit like, you know, the Roger Corman films of... Uh, I love maybe. Corman. So do I love Corman. So I love his... I mean, some of his films are terrible, but um, <laughs> I love the sort of ethos behind the whole thing. And But the thing is, is you've got to pay the crews and the, mm. and the cast, even though they're low-budget movies. Um, and that's why the broadcasters... And you know they, they should like we've had all these big Hollywood movies come into studio to the, you know to all our big studios Pinewood, Shepperton, spending silly silly millions and millions of pounds, and I just think some of that money should be distributed, you know. And I'm not saying get what's me, but just distributed because 
Mm. Independent films need to be made. They need to hire crews and, you know, and, and cast. And it gives people a step up, you know, and mm. it, it keeps the industry rolling. Um, but if it's just the top tier of films that are getting funded, the bottom's going to fall out of it. It's obvious, exactly. especially when they're spending the money that they're spending. And if you think about it, we had the Harry Potters over here. I mean, that was, I don't know what the last one was, a good 10 years ago now. And there's not, there's not many British, not many big budget British films happening, really. You know, Danny Boyle no. might, might get one off the ground, but that isn't going to change the world, really. I mean, you know, so, um, you know, the young, the new filmmakers need to be given opportunities to, to move up to the higher tiers. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, you've got... You've got your filmmakers like uh, Meadows, yeah. Who yeah. you know, I love Meadows. He, he yeah, makes some good well. stuff, but he's not. It's not exactly big budget. Um, no, I don't know what he's done recently. Is he still making films? Is he, or? Um, I think he's still doing the. Um, this is England stuff. Right. I was um, yeah. But I mean, for me, it, it, the highlight of his career was. Um, uh, Dead Man's Dead Shoes, Shoes and Twenty Four Seven, which was the first ever yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Meadows film that I saw. And then you've got Christopher Nolan, um, yeah, yeah, exactly, who started with the following, um, a, a relatively yeah. small budget, and then yeah, Memento, yeah. and then you know he, he's done all right. like that. <laughs> he's, he's done all right, but yeah. you, you know, there's unless you sort of got those. Um, people around you and you've got the people to help you advance your career it's highly unlikely you, uh, un, unless you've been to film school i haven't been to film school i know a couple no, of people know. that have um but you you know they struggle as much as yeah we they, do. They um, do you know unless you know the right people you can't even get your script seen so yeah. you know the, the only way that we can vent our um our stuff is is, is to go independent and yeah. you, you, it's you know. the best way. Write your own script, make your own film. If you want, I mean, that's the way. In you know, Chris Nolan did it. Uh, Gareth Edwards did it with um, monsters, and you know, it's a bit like winning the lottery. Actually, um, you you know, you make a film. If it gets seen by the right people, you get you get in the right festival. It can open huge doors for you. And I mean, that's that's the luck of it. I just thought to myself, you know, my little movie, Invasion Planet Earth. What if, you know, just what if Tarantino happened to buy a copy and watch it and just go, hey, let's find out who this is. He hasn't wrong with you yet, but you no. don't know. It just, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I'm waiting for the call, but, um, but that, that's how it happens. It's luck of the draw. But unless you make stuff and you get it out there, no one's ever going to, you know, you can all talk the talk, but you need to do mm. stuff. So, And it, it takes courage and, you know, it's a lot of work. But um, I'm very pleased with my film, you know, and... Um, and, and, you know, the, the first one I made, I wasn't so happy with. It wasn't a great experience. But this has been a fantastic experience. And I'd, I'd say to anybody, you know, if you want to do it, just just find a way. Do it and find a way. And, you know, there's no set path. You know, just because I've done it this way, it doesn't mean that is right for you. You've just got to find your own way of doing it and ask for help and just go for it. So, you know. Cracking. <laughs> Cracking. So um, have, have you got... Um, where can we see? Where are all the places that you know that we can see? Uh, well, here, here in the UK, Earth. it's say it's on Amazon Prime, Invasion Planet Earth. Uh, don't expect Star Wars or you know anything big budget because it is a low budget movie. But um, I'm really pleased pleased with it. It's it's got a lot of love. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, the DVD, uh, you, well, you can buy the DVD on Amazon. And if you if you like DVDs. I really love the DVD and the making of is great. It shows you exactly what, what went into doing it and um, and all the stuff on it. Um, so, yeah, and that's on Amazon. I think it's like four quid. It's not it's not mm. mega bucks. So um, um, it's good. But say it's on Amazon Prime. And uh, I think that's all we need to know, really. It's it's, um, it's been in cinema, sadly, but those yeah. days gone. I might, when we get back, I might do some mm. Q&A uh, screenings here and there. But... There's, no one's doing much at the moment, so don't hold your breath waiting for that one. You know, I'll let you, you know. Need, you, you need to bring it out on VHS um, for a, a retro feel. <laughs> I, I would certainly watch it. The thing is, I could on. I could put it out on VHS. I've got a load of equipment in my garage, so uh, you know. Yeah, um, I, I love VHS. I love everything about the feel of it. Um, I was quite grumpy on uh, Boxing Day because I, I looked at my 
uh, VHS that I'd managed to convince the wife that uh, to get it into the house because it usually sat in my shed. Uh, and then I looked uh, and the drawer had been broke by one of the kids. And yeah. uh, I went a bit, ooh. Um, but um, I've managed to get a, a, a really nice, cheap reconditioned Sony one. And it's beautiful. It's a, yeah. sort of a prosumer. Uh, and it plays NTSC and stuff like that. Oh, I absolutely love it. Well, if uh, When you watch the film... There's a, there's a moment in the beginning when the kids are watching the TV show called Kaleidoscope Man, which is in the film, and the camera pulls back, and there's an old beta, uh, no, sorry, not beta, it's a uh, beta cat, no, hang on, I forgot what it's called. It wasn't beta max, but it was old VHS, but it was one of those you, from early 80s, you push the button and zzz, it popped up and you put the, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I wanted one like, like my first ever VHS player, and I mm. saw around on eBay and found one, and it, it was like a flipping engine, it was way too tough. <laughs> But we, but it's in there, and and also um, there's a little. I'm looking over there because we shot it over there. It's, it's not there now. Um, but we had. Uh, I, I found this old TV as well, and I got. I wanted it to sort of be like just like my memory when I was young, and I put a painting on the wall that we had of a weeping child in the 70s, and so it's um, there's a lot in there. And there's a Duran Duran record and a Wham record. Nice. There. Like, you know, it's a nice little thing of the period. But but it's a good old fashioned uh, VHS player. So. Yeah, we need, we need I more VHS. Yeah. I it's think coming back. To get away from VHS. I don't want to go back there. Go no, no, it's coming back. I'm convinced it's going to come back. And I've oh, always okay. been oh, God. that and <laughs> um, mini disc. That's coming back. Uh, it needs to come back. Because that is just quality. It's funny um, mini disc. I still think of mini disc as being quite new. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean they've stopped making them now. But I mean yeah, it's like right. the, the quality was just far superior to anything yeah. else. Know, it's it's not made to be throwaway media. No, DVDs no, exactly. and, and, and Blu-ray, the fuck, you know, you scratch it, you throw yeah. it away. Yeah, yeah. You know, VHS, I've used the steady tables, you know. It's um, it's made to... Until made until to the tape snapped or it got chewed up or something. That was always... Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've had a couple hey. of those lately. Yeah. 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 Brilliant, mate. Um, oh, that's great fun, Jack. Thank, thank you for... Um, thank you for getting involved. Um well, Thank you for coming on. Um, we'll have to get you on again uh, when you're doing the uh, of Infinite Worlds. Yeah, we'll that's great. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping this will be the year, so we'll we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Depends how this vaccination goes for people. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, that's great. No, thank you very much. And uh, you know, I'm on uh, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter at Simon Cox Film. Um, yeah, and do check out uh, Invasion Planet Earth, please, folks. I'll, I'll, I'll crack a, a link uh, no, down fine. here um when this video is over um i am going to plug some of my stuff at, um Go for it, man. this is uh my latest uh book in collaboration with steve rafe and kelly massey um and it's paul massey assault at heart and it's the truth about paul massey um and my first book oh that got me started off um it's a poetic memoir uh, it's called A Personal Apocalypse, The Poetic Ramblings of a Troubled Man. And it's about my life, uh, my addiction, uh, my failings as a person, and uh, my death, I'll wait for four minutes, uh, and my rebirth and coming into uh, writing and getting into film. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's, it's my story. Um, right. where, do we, where do we get that? Where can we get that? Joe? So uh, this is available at badboybooks.net, uh, I think. But uh, you can go on Facebook, Facebook, uh, Salford Heart. Uh, and this is available from Warcry Press, now called Warcry Publications. Um, can be found on my Facebook. I will share it also on Amazon. Um, they're all on Amazon. And my second book, which I don't have, um, is also on Amazon, and that's Between the Street Lights and Red Lights, which is Escaping Human Trafficking. Um, and I have some audio as well, so I'll put all that down here, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll see if we can generate some sales uh, and uh, for us all and uh, distribute the wealth. Um, thanks once again for coming on. Um, like I say, we'll get you on for part two. Um, at some point um, and find out where you're getting on um, and we'll, um, we'll we'll chat soon what I'll do is I'll, I'll just take this off live 
Uh, and then we'll have a quick debrief, if that's all right. Fab, yeah, fab. Okay. Cracking. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Nice to meet you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and we will see you soon for episode two. Ta-da. <laughs>